There are way too many Chrome extensions, so let's have a chat about the 10 that I use every single day. Okay, so the first one we're gonna be looking at today is called Ostendo. Now this Chrome extension helps take screenshots of YouTube thumbnails so you can back them up and look at them later for reference if you're trying to find some inspiration for a couple of designs or something like that, or you just want a neat little way to share them on social media. If we head over to YouTube, we can see that, you know, there's a bunch of thumbnails here. Let's say I like the look of PewDiePie's latest video over here. I will play Minecraft again. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tap this little eye icon. And what that's gonna do is give you all these different little boxes that you can click on. In this case, we're going to select PewDiePie's one. And what you can see is like it makes this little image that is really customizable. So you can go ahead and hide the video length. So you can just have the thumbnail as it is like that, which I prefer. You can swap between the view counter to the age of the video, or you can get rid of that bit entirely. You have a dark theme and a light theme. Obviously, I'm going to choose the dark one. Once you've got it looking how you want it to, you can go ahead and either copy it to the clipboard or download it directly. And there we go. We've got a nice little curved image with a transparent background, and we can go ahead and share this on social media just like that and voila the reason i love this one so much is because i back up a bunch of thumbnails that i use as inspiration and i save them all to google drive so not only do i get to capture the thumbnail here and the idea but I also get a way of remembering the title and the content creator who actually uploaded it so it's super handy and then you just throw those in the google drive and visit them whenever you need them later okay next up is nimbus now this is a pretty popular one as you can see it's got 17,000 ratings and it's very highly regarded nimbus is essentially a screenshot tool with a bunch of really cool functions and then it can also record video. So if we go over to this little article right here by IGN, it's a review of the latest episode of The Acolyte. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you open up the Nimbus tab, it comes up with a bunch of different options. Let's say we want to take a screenshot of some of this stuff right here. There are a couple of different ways of doing it. With Nimbus, you can either capture a selected area, which is the pretty standard like snipping tool that we're familiar with, and you can just go ahead and save it like so. But one of the really cool features about Nimbus is that we can actually go ahead and go to capture fragment, and it will recognize areas of the code and segment them into blocks, which we can just tap and save. And just like that, we've got our little text segment like so. And we didn't have to drag crop nothing. But like I said, there are a bunch of different ways of capturing screenshots. You can do the whole page, you can do a delay if you want to do some actions or whatever. And then of course you have the option to record video. Now this is one of my favorite little things. If I just want to make a little tutorial, send it to my nan or a friend or something like that, go ahead and record video, start recording, and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. It's recording in the background, scroll away as much as you'd like, and then just tap the button again. And it's done. From here, Nimbus actually has an option to quickly upload it to Google Drive, YouTube, etc. It has a built-in video editor, which is pretty cool. You can crop certain bits out that you don't really want, and you can even convert it to a GIF, which is awesome. Next up is another one you've probably already heard of, but you don't know how to utilize it as well as you could. Ublock Origin is one of the best ad blockers you can get. By itself, it does a very good job, but it can be expanded upon. So let's go over to IMDB, for instance. As you can see, there are no ads anywhere on the page, which you would normally have. However, you also have the option to remove individual elements. You do this by going up to uBlock Origin and you have two tools down here at the bottom. You have this little zap icon right here. If you tap that, you can select entire segments that you want to remove. So let's say I want to get rid of the whole featured today area boom, it's gone. This can be used for multiple things, whether you just want to remove segments to capture a screenshot or it just kind of bugs you. The issue with this is that when you refresh the page, it's going to come back, as you can see, which I suppose could be a good thing if you want to temporarily get rid of it and not worry about how do I bring it back. But if we scroll all the way down here to this bit, for instance, more to watch, IMD helps you find that. Okay, cool. I'm never going to click on this in my life. If you head back up to uBlock Origin and select the eyedropper tool, what's going to happen is you can actually permanently get rid of this and never worry about it again. So you'll be able to see the code in the little corner down here. Don't worry too much about any of this. You can just go ahead and say create. And just like that, it's gone. If for whatever reason you want to bring it back, it's pretty easy to do so. Tap on the extension, go down to settings, and then here under my filters, you'll be able to find a list of everything that you have permanently blocked using this extension. You can just click on it, delete everything, apply changes, and then when you go back to IMDB, scroll down for a minute and you will find it ready and waiting for you just in case you delete the wrong thing by mistake. Oh, and just in case you didn't know, you can actually turn off individual sites by going up to the little power button. This one's kind of obvious, but I, I figured I'd just include it in the video just in case. All right, this one's kind of a simple one. I don't know if it's gonna help many of you, but I figured I'd include it because like I said, I use this stuff every single day. It's save image as PNG. Uh, incredible name, by the way. <laughs> Normally, if I want to save this image of a tree, I would go here, save image as, and oh, it's web, P. 
the web might be giving a urine sample, so give it some space. In all seriousness, you may encounter a couple of issues when it comes to compatibility with different programs. Some file types don't work with certain applications. So what Save Images PNG actually does, if you scroll down here, there's a little option just like that, and it saves the image as a PNG, so you don't have to worry about converting it. It just saves you a couple of minutes making sure that the file type is correct for whatever application you're working with. <laughs> okay, now we're getting into the fun stuff. So this one is called Text Blaze. It looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. Essentially, all it does is give you a bunch of shortcuts so you don't have to always copy and paste things or have like a, a template in your notes if you're writing emails and cold DMs to people all the time, things like that. So for this one, we're going to be going straight into Google Docs. And the reason for this is because if I type SIG, it's going to actually write my signature like so. How cool is that? This can actually be expanded upon if we did something like form. You can go ahead and have a template ready made for you. So we could do hi, Robert. The customer bought 25 widgets at 24 per widget. Some of these are pro features, but if you just want to do something simple like the signature, that's easy to do. It's only when you start getting into all this stuff with the variables and whatever you actually have to pay for it. But just like that, you have a template thrown straight into your documents. Now, if you want to make your own shortcut or a snippet as TextBlaze calls it, click on the little plus icon up here and it'll put you onto this window. Give your shortcut a name, DM Outreach, for example. Example, and then we could do forward slash DM. So I just made this little example. Now we're going to go back into documents. We're going to delete all of this and type slash DM. We have a template that takes two seconds to write. And all we have to do here is just change the name to Tim the Tap Man, because naturally he would want to collab with me. The next one I consider an essential. It's pretty well known, but I feel like it's necessary if you're spending a lot of time on social media, emails, or if you just enjoy writing, to be honest. This one's called Grammarly. And I'll be honest, this one has a lot of paid features that are kind of a annoying to navigate, but it's the best that I have found in terms of not only assisted writing and grammar checks, things like that, but it also has a couple of cool features, things that would be considered pro features that it lets you have uh, quite a decent amount of. So this tiny sentence here will give you a couple of examples of what it can do. We have a spelling error, which that's, you know, that's part of Grammarly. You don't have to pay anything extra for that. Pretty standard. Then you also have some grammar corrections. So there should be a comma here. Grammarly is very good at recognizing the style of your writing, and it can also assist you in making it better. Okay, hello, my name is Hero. I would like a chance to collaborate with you. You're an awesome creator. What you want to do is highlight the area that you want to work on. Go down here and you have an option to rewrite with Grammarly. Sometimes there'll be a little box underneath, but for now, we're going to go ahead and click this one. You'll get this little pop up and you can set a voice which will kind of imitate a certain tone. So you can either be casual, neutral, formal, depending on the circumstance. Once you're done with that, go ahead and select improve it. It'll fix both the grammar mistakes and the spelling. And then you have the option to make it a little bit more persuasive, for example. I really admire your work and I would love to collaborate with you. You're an amazing creator. That sounds way better than what I wrote. Click insert and just like that, it's updated. Something else we can do with Grammarly is we can actually go over here and we can go more ideas and there's a bunch of different things that you can do. Now, a lot of these are pro features, things that you would have to pay for, but Grammarly is very generous and gives you a hundred of these that you can use every 14 days or every month, something like that. But what if we want to summarize everything? Well, here is an article from IGN. It's just a very simple little thing and what we can do we can actually select everything go over here more ideas and then we can do summarize what's going to happen is it's going to break it down into the most important points then all we have to do is go ahead and copy this like so. There is, however, an easy way of doing this, which brings me over to our next extension, ChatGPT Summarize and Chat. Now, I know a lot of you aren't overly keen on AI, but for this, I think you should make an exception. Let's go ahead onto IGN once again, and there's this whole article about the brand new Zelda game that was just announced. Rather than reading through all of this, what we can do is we can go ahead and tap the extension, and it's going to automatically summarize everything on the page. And I, as far as I can tell, this has unlimited uses. Next up, we have Tango, and it's not the drink, but it's something Thing even better. Tango is a really cool app that generates walkthroughs that you could send to other people, share on social media, and you don't actually have to do anything other than the thing you're trying to explain. Let me explain. Let's say I want to make a quick little guide to show somebody how to access the YouTube audio library. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start the Tango, start the capture right here in the extension, and it'll tell you the process has been started. Search for YouTube, select the first link, and I'm just doing whatever I would normally do to get to this point anyway. We're gonna go to my channel, YouTube Studio, go straight down to Audio Library, and just for good measure, let's put in Happy Songs. Well, YouTube is morbidly depressed, but I think we are pretty much done. So all we would do is go ahead and select OK, and Tango will take every single action that we've just taken and turn it into a really simple and easy to understand guide like so. 
And that's where you can go in, you can change the title and add descriptions and how to do X, Y, and Z. Then we can go ahead and share and export it. So you could post this to social media and give a really brief walkthrough. I could link it down in the description of the video, which I haven't done, but there are links to all of the extensions I've spoken about today. And just like that, yeah, pretty much done. But let's say rather than hosting it on a website, you want to send it as a PDF, you can do that as well. Go to export and then download PDF. But then it's just a super simple walkthrough. So if you're trying to help a family member out with a problem, this could be a really quick and easy way of doing that. This next one is more of a convenience thing, but I feel like anybody who spends a lot of time in their emails will get a lot of value from this. Checker Plus for Gmail is a really simple extension that adds your inbox and a couple of simple functions to your extensions. So right here, we have all of my latest emails and I can actually go ahead and manage them all from this extension without even needing to go into Gmail, do anything there. I can archive it, I can mark it as spam, I can delete it, mark as read and open it directly in Gmail if it's something that I want to address. I've actually been using this for such a long time, I have a discount <laughs> if I were to upgrade. I don't know exactly what could be upgraded, but that's that's pretty cool, I suppose. Last but certainly not least is a, an extension that I have only just started using, but I found that it's incredibly useful, particularly if you own any websites, if you have newsletters, even like some social media elements and things like that. This one is called Mobile Simulator. Now, I'm sure a lot of developers and things like that will be familiar with what this kind of tool does, but let's say we're on my store. Okay, so I've got a couple of products here and it all looks nice and good, but I don't know how it's going to look on mobile. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and tap the extension up here and we're going to automatically get a mobile view and everything is interactable. So we could go ahead and check out one of the hoodies. That looks pretty cool on mobile. There we go. So super simple. And if you want to change the address, you know, you could just do this pretty simply. Let's say I want to check out my newsletter and see what that looks like on mobile. Go ahead and check that. Oh, damn. Look at all these cool resources and news updates that go out every single Monday that you should definitely subscribe to. Again, this one's more of just a quality of life thing, particularly if you're in this kind of space. I never realized how much I actually needed this until I got it and started playing around with it. And yes, there are a bunch of different devices you can preview. The, the latest models, such as the iPhone 15, Pro Max, the Galaxy S24, things that have just come out. These are all pro features. So you have to pay, I think, £2 or £3, something like that, to be able to preview them. But let's say you want to see what it looks like on an iPad, you can go ahead and do that as well. So this is, again, what my newsletter looks like. Looks pretty good. What about on a MacBook Air? I haven't owned a MacBook in years. I should probably get one again. I miss that <laughs> that smooth experience. Wait, I can view my, my newsletter on an Apple Watch. Okay, no, that's, that's not exactly optimized, but... <laughs> <laughs> at least it works and you can actually go ahead and like take a screenshot with the device frame like so then you have this cool little png with the device that you could chuck in a video or something like that which it's nice to have there's actually a video option as well which is really cool we can just right click anywhere on the screen go down to here and go start a tab record and just like that you'll be able to scroll do whatever you want to do click onto the newsletter voila and voila look <laughs> <laughs> how cool is this? If you wanted to do this in Premiere or After Effects, this would take God knows how long. It's annoying that you have to pay to download it in MP4 format. Not a big deal because you could just web it and then convert it. But still, it's an unnecessary step just to try and make a couple of quid. One quick bonus extension is you see how we have this nasty little scroll bar on the side that everybody has and it's so outdated. Well, you can actually download this guy right here, the modern scroll bar. And when you're on pretty much any other website than Google, for some reason, it doesn't want to work on. You have this sleek, simple Mac OS looking scroll bar here that looks way better than the default one. Aesthetics, baby, they matter. Okay, that's pretty much it for today's video. If you have any other extensions you want me to check out or you just want to share with the community, be sure to leave them down in the comment section. Naturally, there'll be links to everything in the description. You can go and check out everything that I've shown you today. All right, I love your faces, you're amazing, beautiful, and I will catch you in the next one.